Five o'clock in the morning, I just started going, this is the world's most beautiful canvas and I can do anything I want. And this is about art and technology, which are the, that's what I love more than anything in the world. Historic Macintosh t-shirt! Wow! <laughs> Wheels for, for the mind! <laughs> Like Alan Lundell, as you're playing with a... We don't have a Lisa, do we? Uh, yes, we do. We do have a Lisa. Yeah, yeah, we're talking to Ronnie. Wow, the Apple three. Wow. Well, up until the point we made the first PC boards, this was the only prototype. It was rebuilt many, many times. Wire, wire. All the way back in, I never get to the circuit card. So it's a whirl of a lot of wires, you know. We expect to be geekaholics by the time we get out of there. <laughs> Actually, I was well, interested in the yeah. gardens and the pigs, which we just had a really good time with. Uh, my son and I got one of those TI 90s, of one of the you know the, the TI computers, the push 16-bit computer. Uh huh. He was using it to. Um, Ham radio had gotten to the point of sending still frames over the radio, uh -huh. and this computer would assemble it and then be broadcast it. That's what they would use it. So he was doing that. So I took that computer. Um, <laughs> it was one of our uh, little play games on it. Do you know the pits are kitty litter trainable? That if a hacker runs an exploit, like a, a script kitty tool or, or a scanner, uh -huh. the crunch box just makes the network disappear. Poof, gone, into a little black hole. Yep. And you can't hack what you can't see. Oh, good. So wow. that's incredible. The people that were involved in microcomputers in the beginning, you, you look at them and they're all sort of these hippie types, and sort of myself included. I, Mm -hmm. I, was, I grew up in the 60s, and as those of us that were involved in microcomputers were out to change the world, it was a very political thing. We absolutely were there to change the world, you know, and the, the early people. This drove a lot of this. This book, this is Ted Nelson's book, mm -hmm. Peter Nelson, and he came and spoke at Humber once, and I was just amazed by this guy. It just blew me away, the, you know, the vision that he put out there, and. It was the first really intelligent stuff I'd ever heard anybody say there. I haven't seen Nelson in a long time. Did he disappear? I remember it well. Yes, I remember it well. I had a pot belly pig in my house for two years up in Washington State. And the only thing is we had an apple orchard and all the apples dropped and he ate all the apples and he grew so fat that he couldn't get up the stairs anymore and then he couldn't sleep in our bed anymore. And he was so... and I had to carry him and it'd be the... <laughs> These really scary steps every night, you know, and he'd have to sleep. He was, his name was Pugsley. 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 <laughs> Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was remembering how to do it again. Oh, yeah, the old spaces. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit. When did you first uh, I was, get a story with this? I was six years old, and I got a 400 with a peanut butter keyboard. Oh, yeah. my God. That's what we used to call it. Oh, 400. Trying to type what on that a thing. classic. You couldn't speed type on these things at all. Oh, no. And all I ever did, I spent more time in basic than anything. Yeah. How long did you spend on these machines? Uh? Oh, my God. Seven, eight hours a day as a six-year-old. Yeah. Six years old, what all I ever did was... How many lines of code did you write? All working lines? Yeah. Working lines of code? Or yeah, working lines of code. Three. In ten years. <laughs> oh, come on. That's that bad of a program. No, at the time, bad. at six years old, it was, I, I remember yeah, that I had to go use crutches like programming forth and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. There's uh, seven graphics modes to it. I remember I was, my big challenge was I was going to write the Atari logo in graphics. I was going to okay. write a program that printed it like out on the screen. I had a problem with your video screen there. And I ended up, my grandpa had the 800, and then... Later, I ended up getting an 800XL, and I remember the keys 
are held in by this front panel. So when you take it off, you have to do it upside down. And if you lift it, yeah. I remember because I was curious and I was stupid and I was like nine. And my mom called for something and I had it sitting on my bed. And I came back mad and jumped on my bed with the keyboard wide open and the springs went oh. everywhere. I didn't have an 800XL anymore. Oh man, that was it, huh? That was it? Oh man. Everybody I talked to says, oh, I started on a Commodore. I started on a Commodore. I always started as Atari's, where it's always it. This is like home for me right here. <laughs> my grand, my uncle, if it weren't for my uncle, I wouldn't be in the field I'm in now. Wow. We got the 400. I was four or five, maybe six. And all he kept saying was, he was so supported. I remember the book. There was a thicker book. Yeah, it was a thicker book that was all about basic. I don't know if we've got one here, but I had that thing for 15 years and I never, ever lost it. I couldn't, I used it, it was like my Bible for the longest time. Wow. I, I'm having a geek fuzz. My head is going nuts. You do look bad! Oh my god, Mr. Sporty Pants! <laughs> Anyway, this is the same generation. I built all of them, actually. Do it all in the stands. Yeah, when you have it in these hip packs, you can't have the connection. Did you? There's a weird one for you. Just a memory that I'll never lose. We had the cassette drive for this, and I wanted to save my programs. And I was on the phone with him, and he said, "Type C save, and the name of your program." and it'll save it to the cassette. So I'm typing S-E-A-S-A-V-E -E and S-E-E-S-A-V-E. -E I never thought the letter C, S-A-V-E, -E, my cassette. I was seven or eight, I was young, but oh, it took me hours to, that was my first computers are frustrating moment, you know, because over the years, there's millions of those, but that one was my first, I can, I'll never forget it. Huh. Are you starting with a 400? Yep, right there, that's the exact model that I had. Wow. I'm, uh, when I, I was literally hoping I would find one here. I knew this was a nostalgia, and I saw the crane, and I'm going, ooh, that's a little old. And I saw the Macs, and I'm ooh, these guys are Mac guys, and I get up here, and there's the Atari set. <laughs> Pugsley actually knew how to, to you, you know how they root? They root with their nose or something? Yeah. Uh -huh. He would, he would, whenever he could, he'd want to root my butt and my legs. And he'd just <laughs> work them and work them and work them, and it was like... Yeah, <laughs> of course, I can understand. You know, I don't I do know. the same thing. <laughs> I mean, he'd go and it was the best massage. <laughs> and the only way to stop a pig without having the pig be offended and not like you yeah. is to use a squirt gun. Because then they, they don't like the water and they go away, but they don't know where it's coming from. If you, if you swap them, they'll never forget. Hmm. Like Excellent. Elephants. You know, they're very smart. They're smarter than dogs. And then they don't like you anymore. Wow. Thank you. Okay, what are we doing? Look at this. This yeah. thing is wild. Look how it goes like that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It is. It's yeah. a Minotaur. It's like a little box it's like a, for the like U.S. A, market. Have you seen wow. it before? I have never seen that before. Hey, look at how it goes like that. Isn't that neat? Woo! That's really cool. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. 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 I don't know about heroes. <laughs> you would not believe what these two men did. A donation to to Piglet, Theo, or Mama, the three pigs that live here in the barn. Checking the swag. Uh, <laughs> Anything good? Actually, yeah. Huh? This, this thing up to it. We got a we got well, we got we got that Toshiba. We got an Apple 28 hard drive. Ooh. And over here on the, the sharp uh, word processor. Look at them, look at it all done. It's just when you've spent countless hours you know doing stuff that kind of things. Look at this wasted skill you have. <laughs> How to buy a home? I remember seeing this. It was written in 1983. It was, it was for the Electronic Industry Association. They were trying to get into computers, into home computers. They contracted with me to write this to introduce retailers and their customers to the whole idea of a home computer, which was very new at that time. It was inspired by astronaut checklists that I used to work with. Yeah. So the idea was to make it so simple that you could just get on a checklist and answer specific questions on whether or not you needed this or this. Back in those days, it was a cartridge or cassette tape or diskette. That's all you had in those days. So you could decide what you wanted. And what's the story? You just check them off. 
you know, what made the PC work? In 1979, I was going to uh, the Friday night music jam sessions in Palo Alto. Having the computer stuff, I wanted to I wanted to make computer music on my synthesizer. Mm. So I took the keyboard, I took the synthesizer apart, and I found the X and Y inputs to the keyboard matrix. And I cut a hole in the case and put a connector on and ran all the wires for the X and the Y matrix for the keyboard. But I, I made a little interface card for the Apple II that would mimic key presses on the synthesizer. Oh, really? Okay. Oh. And then I wrote a basic program that would read the input from a joystick and assign note values based on you know left to right and up to down for duration. And then so I had that whole thing running. So it was a, a joystick and a synthesizer and the portable Apple II. You could run this basic program and you'd have this little thing where you could twiddle around with the joystick and make weird noises, which is cool for 1980. This is 1980. Yeah. Well, it had rechargeable batteries in it, CPM, and a five megabyte hard drive. That was. I mean, that was. Whoa. That was VIP, huh? Well, your first first computer. Yeah, the Radio Shack three. TR TRS eighty. Yeah. You had a trashy. I bought two systems for thirty-eight thousand dollars each. Thirty-eight thousand dollars. They cost. And they had, they had big, what is it, five inch, five seven and a half? Inch. Seven, seven inch. Seven inch. Seven inch. Seven inch. Floppy inch. Yes, I remember those. Yeah. They, they, were, they, they were the size of 78 RPM. That's right. Yeah, about the size of the 78 RPM. Yeah. And I used the electric pencil to do all my work uh, problems. Yes, I remember that. The electric pencil. pencil. Yeah. So TRS-80, I, I, I think I did Faster Than Light on that, or, or, or uh, one of my, maybe it was one of reality, it was, it, it, it was one of my books, I actually I wrote, wrote on a yeah. TRS-80. Yeah. You did? I wrote a book on the TRS-80. Yeah. 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 I think I wrote uh, Beyond Pyramid Power on the TRS-80. Believe me, should be the typewriter. Fred Brooks, another guy that, that was really known for his work for the 360, and you know, he was the 27-year-old guy that IBM sort of bet the farm on to be able to design and bet the company on uh, mm -hmm. uh, what became today is, is IBM Corporation. This is a 16th inch thick FR4 Claven retardant number four circuit board. And this is pure gold on the surface, so that's what gold actually looks like. This is what they call a plated through hole circuit board. That means this trace, that's the name for these wires on here, comes over here and then all of a sudden it just dead ends. Well the reason is if you turn it over, find it reappears here and it goes down here. And then it dead ends and it comes up here and it hooks up to pin two of the edge connector right there. It's just what everybody was doing. You know, I grew up, um, my best friends had Nobel Prizes and were the head of like Xerox Alto, you know, Xerox Park when they were doing all of their stuff. You know, that was my friend's dad. You know, I just was around these people and it just made sense that we were doing all of these things. I was one of the designers of the Star Workstation. There were four of us who did the user interface design. Really? And there was a whole team that did the operating system design, the hardware, you know, all the different parts. Yeah. But, uh, you actually worked on the look of it? On the what? On, on the look of it, how the screen would look and, and the icons well, and such? Yeah, I wrote a lot of the functional specification. I managed one of the software groups and I designed the hardware for the display. The, the display. We started off with a, a little tiny uh, display in a vertical format with very small dots on it that was hard to see. So we expanded it to the, the big, basically 17 inch monitor. And uh, I, I have volumes of your work, of your single page specifications of each you know class, volumes and volumes of it in my library still. Amazing stuff. What happened in the 90s, despite the disaster created by financial type people, so-called professional managers, um, they didn't kill everything. And that the global culture connected to the net exists now. And we have only begun to see the potential of that. So a country like Brazil is, is an equal member in many ways to Silicon Valley. That was the number two logic board design. Who was number one? Pearl Smith. He's the one who got his picture in all the <laughs> pictures. You know. He got the publicity. He got a PR agent. Pearl designed most of the board. I did the I did the keyboard and I did the peripheral circuits. Pearl did the timing chain and the allocation. So that was the hard part. Uh, but I had the rare, satisfying opportunity of bringing all the prototypes to life. That was my job. That was really satisfying. This is superhero. Okay.
Now, Jim Eddy is in charge of parking, shuttles, road safety, dump runs, uh, hero worship. Is that the Eddie Ranch? Here He's the, this Eddie is the Eddie Ranch here at Golden Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever she needs, don't we take care of And that's exactly right. So I asked him, because I found out about four days ago, that my love, my great love, Bruce Danner, had invited concern. Oh, and thanks to Alan Lundell, who's behind the camera, who is a broadcast mechanism that knows no equal, we had invited conservatively 2,000 people from all over the globe to this party. And we can park 30. So I thought I had a little problem I should solve. I solved it. When I thought I had a problem, Bruce and I broke up. When I solved it with this man here, Bruce proposed to me. So girls, you just solve a little parking problem and those you're gonna get a ring on your finger. You see what I mean? So all the all right. So all yeah. So we did early spatial displays in the early eighties. I'm still stuck on text and numbers, personally. You're still stuck on text and numbers. I still like text. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. I'll get onto the graphics maybe one of these days. Yeah. Uh, we, we're doing numbers. some text and numbers stuff uh, with uh, Ralph Abraham in Santa Cruz. Oh, you are. You're, yeah. you're friends with Ralph. Yeah, we're actually working on a project together. It's very cool. It uses spatial visualization of the data. That did, did you know Ralph when he had the uh, macroscope uh, yeah. set oh, yeah. up in his lab? Yeah. yeah. Vibrating glycerin. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Who was that? Ted Nelson. I remember. Oh, you're kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. It was a double sided book. Yeah. You turn it upside down, it was another book. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that idea. Uh -huh. That's so cool. He was ahead of his time. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Boy, this is amazing. So that's the 70s, right? It starts at the 70s. Well, the idea that you had a mouse. Yeah. The idea that you had graphical windows that you could move around. Okay. And this was all in the 70s at Xerox Park. Uh, I those whose logic circuits are faulty. Plus Lisa, uh, this no, is the precursor to the uh, map. Yeah. It first came out as a little Lisa. Oh, named after Steve Jobs' daughter. Oh, wow. It's kind of like a laptop. I was going to buy that, but when I compared it to the K-Pro, man, I went right for the K-Pro. I mean, are you kidding me? No, that was like mid-80s. The consumers of this... Well, this, this, was this was CPM, right? Yeah. Also, yeah. yeah. That's quite a handsome, tight little... Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man, that's and cool. I remember this is a titanium case. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you lost it for one of those. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. God, you guys, I tell you, this is, this is mm -hmm. like Barbie dolls for girls, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. A yeah. smart, well, for blondes, anyway, you know. The big mainframes? Yeah. Oh, that's it. I worked on mainframes like that for IBM. That's like the IBM 7094 Mod 2. And um, for NASA, that's why we ran the space shop with Gemini Space Shop. Yeah. It looked like that. That's like right. That. Yeah. Yeah. Just the oh, yeah. And, and uh, the floors were three feet deep and air conditioned underneath. And we, all the cables ran underneath. And uh, and it was like ice cold under that floor. If I got hot, I'd pick up a, one of the slabs and go under the uh, computer. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. And all the programming was done with the switches and, and hexadecimal oh notation. My I mean, God. phones and you put it in there. No. <laughs> And then, of course, you get more more contemporary. I mean, you, and you see that's what the DigiBarn is all about. I mean, you can see how how Apple and kind of the evolution of Apple and some of the Xerox Star, or look at Xerox Park, some of the things that worked and didn't work. Okay, <laughs> right. you just scratch the surface of what information is all about. I mean, I, I I'm always teased by these people who say, no, well, you know, we're, we're done with computing or we're done with information. You know, we're into biotech, and then you ask yourself, well. What is it that's going to stimulate the base for innovation in any of these other fields? That's where information technology really has, has played its, its major role. This was a cool thing I made for Burning Man last year. It's, these came from a Worlds of Wonder laser tag game. And then I was looking at it and thinking, wait a minute, that's kind of like the Burning Man logo. See, there's the Burning Man yeah, logo. Yeah. So this went around and these two went up and down like that. I was wearing this at Burning Man last that's summer. So cool. and. Todd Rundgren really liked it. He had me put it up on stage when he did his Ooh. little, uh, his little <laughs> cool. 
I had I had a big staff, and this was mounted on the staff, so I was walking around with this. Oh, that got the new Well, yeah. Oh God. Do I look 3D now? Well, you were 3D. Now you're kind of now somewhere I'm, in between. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm more or less. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to be here a couple of hours ago, and I was like, oh, okay. So, well, I'm glad I made it. And the, Audrey, what a yes. beautiful machine this is. This is Becomes build device. Yeah. This is... Some of the, uh, the ergonomics, the design. Here's your email button. You press this, and it brings you into uh, brings you into your account. This is blank, because so we don't have it configured here. But this is where all your email would come in. Um, and you can go in and read. And these were, these, you actually could change these and you'd get different fonts and you'd be able to uh, have really fancy print. Oh, yeah. You know, with these symbols. symbols. It was really, really sweet. It's kind of like the IBM Selectric Balls were coming yeah, out. And, balls. Yeah, these were Xerox. This was the Xerox version of it. Yeah, I had the Xerox. It was about the printer. Weighed about 150 pounds. It was huge. Yeah. yeah. And what'd you pay for it? And I tied for a seven grand instead of a thousand dollars. And and I had a bunch of the Daisy Wheels, and I did newsletters, and I was so proud of those newsletters. I thought they were so professional looking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They were. They were the awesomest things at the time. This was before uh, the desktop publishing revolution. Before. Before WYSIWYG, right? Before, WYSIWYG, right, before we had the, the Mac. Laser uh, combo printer combos, and all that. This was the Daisy Wheels before all that. The Xerox machines of the uh, 70s here were the inspiration for later later technology. Jobs saw these machines and got impressed. So was impressed by them that he helped create the Lisa and the Macintosh. They had a similar type of GUI or graphical user interface with little icons and the pull down menus. And then the mouse, you know, as Pat was pointing out, these early mice are very similar to today's mice. They're even optical. Mm -hmm. This was the premier issue of Mac. Well, the very first, the very, very first. Wow, there's Jobs showing off the very first hands. Oh, I had Andrew Warhol sit one piece. part of it. You look inside the case, the first Mac, you see the names of all the people that work on it. What? Bruce and I went on a trip um, last May, May of 2001, uh, to a place, a really weird place in the valley, uh, called uh, Weird Stuff. And it so inspired Bruce, he just felt this compelling urge to buy all these old machines. And there was, you know, machines for five bucks, you know, ten, twenty, and uh, we just filled my car with uh, these cheap old computers. And that's how it kind of began, you know, we, we were there, and then we went to this close out of a Mac store, and we got all these old Macs for 5, 10, 15 bucks a piece. <laughs> and, uh, Are you kidding? No. And then other people came and saw that and started giving us their collections. You know? oh, so, you know, it just, it sort of snowballed from there. Well, they There's something that, you know, is really deep in his heart that he felt he had to do this. Uh, for me... Uh, I mean, I, I kind of believe in the future that there will be synthetic sentience and 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 uh, probably merge with human consciousness in some interesting way. But my feeling is that it's not so much a museum here as it is a nursery, and that these are these are um, you know in the future so we're interested in the old skulls of the human ancestors, the Athapithecus and the Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon and all this. Right. The machines of the future are going to be really interested about their heritage. And um, these machines uh, are something that they will pay attention to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, Grandfather Mac. The old guy. <laughs> so, you know, I, th I, I feel that there's an element, you know, to the, that the silicon entities of the future want this to happen. And uh, it, it might just be me, but you know, I feel like that's part of this. It's a nursery as much as it is a museum right. in that respect. That'd be cool. Yeah. Fly on it. You can, you can do like huge numbers. I mean, it's very accurate. They use it for marketplace. Yeah, and Chinese people, they can go really fast on it. But by far the most brilliant, memorable, gotcha image would have been the flying elephant by Jay Vigon. That these were basically made in, in uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota by Scandinavian yeah. ladies who were good at needlepoint. 
it's, it's about six months of some Scandinavian lady standing in here, no, doing it. And hooking it up. And hooking it up. wire wrapping? No, this is, uh, this is all, uh, 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 compression. Where to put point A and point B? I mean, how to, what, what? I, I have no idea what the document is. I mean, how could you know where to, did, did, was it random? The wires aren't color coded. But the, all the wires are one, two, or three feet long, except uh -huh. there's a couple of four-footers in there. Yeah. And, and each foot is about a nanosecond, and that's part of the logic. Okay, thing. all right. But you're, you're absolutely right. If, if, if somebody is in here trying to do this wiring, what do they look at? Do they have, does God tell them <laughs> what to do? You know, there's no room. One nice thing wow. about it is, is, is this side is memory, and this side is memory, and it isn't quite as random logic as the arithmetic unit. Uh -huh. That part there is the arithmetic okay. unit, and you know, typically they're an awful mess. Oh my, they're twisted pairs. Yeah, yeah. twisted pairs. That is unbelievable. That's incredible. We're almost has it, but he's got to do a little redesign. Okay, hey, go neck him! <laughs> <There you go. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Kissing booth, bye!